though just uh, especially offensively um, they just really played well I, I don't know if you know but I, I think my stats are right Bamba had six threes coming in here he made five and I think the other two might have been against us in, or a month ago uh, we had opportunities um, the turnovers were the turnovers were, were a big difference in the, in the first half and certainly in the second half as well I, I don't have an answer for you we it's the the walk call right now um, is uh, changing it we, we got to go back and go back and we're, we wouldn't we didn't might not have walked for two weeks and now all of a sudden we're walking so I don't know if we're doing it or the emphasis has changed but we got to correct it but those were those are those are just throwaways that you, you have 25 turnovers in a game you're not going to win and um, it's one thing if, if we're uh, if we're throwing the ball away because but but just not getting a shot at the basket because of a walk right now uh, well, I got to figure it out because it, it you, you can't win you can't win with that so but uh, they made shots we, we'd have a whole bunch of six point six point swings where uh, we make a we miss a three they make a three and it's a six point swing and it did us in Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Beyond the travels, which clearly had you frustrated throughout, what else do you feel like contributed to the 25 turnovers? Yeah, their their length it bothers us a lot. Um, we're just everybody's longer than us, everybody's taller than us. It's it's just a difficult. Um, it's just difficult, difficult for you guys to see who's open, uh, ball handling, everything. I mean, my my point right now is almost. It, it, with the opportunities that we have to practice, get back to a training camp mode on fundamentals again, on catching the ball on two feet, a ball handling. Um, just There were some really sloppy plays, especially starting the second half. I think there was a couple of them. So disappointing. I mean, disappointing to spend a, spend a Thanksgiving um, you know, after uh, that performance. What's the message to Darius on a night like tonight where he had eight turnovers? Yeah, I think we have to, the message is let's sit down and watch the video and see why it happened. That's the message. And, um, you know, I think we can't lose, sack of, uh, lose sight of the fact he's starting to make shots again. Um, and some of those, I think there must have been five walks. I, I don't know, three or five, four, three, three to, must have been five walks. Maybe three other turnovers. He stepped on the baseline as well, which he's been doing a lot. Just try to teach him through it. Um, but you don't want to leave the message. He made a couple of really good takes to the basket and some good shots. Second. Kelsey Roos with The Athletic. In the third quarter, it looked like uh, you pulled Kevin Love. What, and he looked really frustrated when he came off. What happened in that moment for Kevin? Well, he, he just wasn't himself. I didn't think he was himself at all. He wasn't moving around. I don't know if you saw the defensive rebound that was right in front of him that mm -hmm. he just cleans up every day. So given the back injury, it, it just it wasn't doing well. And then when he sat for a little bit, I said, okay, let's just put him back in here and see, you know, if uh, he was tired or it, whatever. I asked him if he could go. He said he could go. But um, I think he did maybe make one during – no, he didn't. He didn't make one of those other threes when he was in there. And Colin Sexton had, I think, 13 points in the fourth quarter. What did you see change between the first half and the second half, especially in the fourth quarter for him? <sighs> I, I, I don't recall. I'd be mean, probably, uh, you know, was, was probably more aggressive during that time. I mean, I, I love that he got five assists today. I, I hate that he still had turnovers. Um, our guards, if you just if you compare stats between our guards and other guards, that there's a lot of growth to be had there in assist turnover ratio, which is one of my biggest stats. I just have lived by it, and and you look at ours, and it's just uh, it's just okay. It's going to grow. Uh, you look at others, and it's it's like and look at DJ Augustine or something like that. It's amazing, and that's where we got to get to. But he uh, he can score the ball like like few others can in the paint. Okay. Um, Cameron Fields, Cleveland.com. Um, Kevin Porter Jr. came off the bench and really facilitated. Well, I guess what did you think of his game today? I thought it was terrific. You know, he he makes he makes some he gets his hands on some things. And uh, he really did. He does a great job of putting pressure on the defense. Um, his biggest issue right now, frankly, is just losing shooters. Right? That he just he he, he I think there was uh, there's too many. Let's just say it was too many losing shooters. So he, we, we talked about it. he's he's staring at the ball too long, and we're going to really work at that to get him to see the man and see the ball more and more. 
Yeah, he, he, he didn't. You know, he didn't. He's just learning those things. And you lose Fournier for a second, and it's over. So it's a it's a different level of guy. He's guarding the guy might be one of the best shooters in the world, in the whole world. And and it, you, he's got to understand how one blink of the eye, he's waiting for that, and he's going to push you off and get open. Yeah, and you talk about that defensive positioning. Um, he also is like committing some fouls too over yeah. the course of the season. How can he improve that? Well, position I, I think it's the same thing we talked about. There is his hands are on people, and when you put your hands on people and they just raise their arms, it's going to be a foul. He's very handsy with that, and that's what's getting him. A, there hasn't been many fouls that didn't involve his hands. And he's got a, he's got this great wingspan. He's got to use that wingspan, but not this isn't a wingspan. This is a wingspan. Uh, John, Steve Herrick from AP. Is Kevin's uh, injury becoming more of a concern for you? And just, you know, looking ahead, how do you, you know... I have no idea how, how, how to interpret it yet. You know, back, if you've had, Steve, if you've had a bad back, it's one day to another day. You don't know what it's going to be like. And uh, he... Uh, you know, he, he wants to go out there and give it his all, but and he probably and he wants to play even when he's hurt. Maybe in in when he's out there and playing is hurt, but he can't he can't move the way he functionally needs to move. It's not good for him, it's not good for us. It's like anybody. It's like anybody. James Rp ninety two three the fan. Coach, you guys were still in it at halftime despite the yeah. turnovers. What were the, the first few minutes? What did you think of the first few minutes of that third quarter? Because that's when it seemed well, they were to off. Get... I mean, we make the three and it's four points. Mm -hmm. And then I think we missed a, a couple of threes and we had a turnover. I, you know, I can't recall it all. Sure. There's 200, play, 200 actions out there. But it was just, I, then I call a timeout like at 930, 10 minutes, mm -hmm. right, right away. Yep. So that's what I thought of those first few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a timeout. Let's regroup. And then, obviously, with the turnovers, that's that's not something that Darius will be happy about. Right. But overall, have you noticed the change in his confidence over the past week? I, I see a, I see a more energy and confidence in him, and I see more frustration with the turnover. He realizes it's it's something that is. Um, is something he has to improve in. It frustrates him when he does it. The walk's the most frustrating thing. It is because it's you can't. It's not like a, even a judgment thing. It's a thing you've been doing for 19 years, and now it, it's you can't do it anymore. And that, that's what really gets me frustrating. But I've already told our development guys that's priority number one every day before practice. Catching it on two, using one primary pivot foot, slowing down cleaning that stuff up because I think they had one or two. They had veteran players who know how to do it, and we got he got caught several times. And I, I, I'm going to look at everyone. I'm going to look at everyone. I'm going to slow it down because sometimes the guy moves his foot that much, and it's, they're calling it a walk. And that's 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 not really not fair. It's, it's like every time a guy touched him, it's got to be a foul. Right? It's not fair. So we have to continue to work at it and, and get aligned with the officials that were on the same page there. And I'm sure they'll, they'll do a great job with it. Uh, same amico SI.com. Coach, how do you, it seems like you guys take like two steps forward a lot during the games and then. When was that? No, no, I, I, I'm talking about <laughs> maybe a step One forward step when you were four and five, right? Yeah, the and then kind of, kind of go back optimistic, a little bit. Optimistic, thank you. <laughs> and how do you, how do you, kind of, roll with that and get them to be a little more consistent and just um, stay the course. I mean, just really stay the course and show them, show them the trends in the game. Like we, you, you can show a lot of different clips, but. but what I'm gonna, what I know I'm gonna do more is more team clips, and this is what happened during this time. This this play led to this play led to this play, not just offensive clips and defensive clips, and so that will show this the game of runs that you can avoid if you if you just see what's going on, you understand tempo, momentum, uh, what got you going in the right direction, and what you took took you out of that direction. We had to teach it.